Bob Stoops feeling mighty good about his recent matchups with the SEC, winning four consecutive games. That was, of course, the Sugar Bowl this year against Auburn, the Sugar Bowl a few years ago against Alabama at the conclusion of the 2013 campaign, and back-to-back -back wins against Tennessee in the regular season, home and home. But there's the rest of the conference in the Big 12. Mark Rogers TV comparing the conferences. So what we do... Going back the last two off-seasons is take all the results of all the Power 5 games and put them into context, seed the teams, and then weight the results of the games based on who's playing who, and then throw it all together and give you who played the best, not necessarily who is the best, but the results speak volumes, who played the best that particular season. We're working on those numbers. We'll get those to you. In the meantime, this is just a fun exercise of matching up the teams in the conferences and trying to project who would win the games. All right, like I've talked about in previous videos, please check them out. We've marched through the ACC, and now we've got the SEC against everybody else. Uh, we, we are matching them up in terms of seedings and 10-game series because we know that some matchups are lopsided and a one-game scenario doesn't uh, reveal that, and others are extremely close in a one-game scenario and trying to determine who wins Florida State LSU it's very difficult. So over 10 games, who would win the majority? That's what we're doing here, the SEC against the Big 12. Credit the Big 12 for a nice postseason at 4-2. and two. They kind of made up for an awful, horrendous regular season against the other Power 5 leagues. All right, the SEC against the Big 12. This is just my opinion, but here's my validation for it. Alabama, Oklahoma. Oklahoma's really good. They ran through the Big 12 at 9-0. and oh. We saw them in the bowl game against Auburn. Consider that Auburn was 8-5 and five after the bowl loss. They were not an elite team. They're a top 15 to 20 team. So, yes, credit Oklahoma with winning in the second half, but Auburn without Sean White in the second half. And, of course, Auburn, you could have thrown Tennessee in that game, LSU in that game, Texas A&M. It would have been no difference. There's no very little depth in the Big 12, and we shall see that play out here. Also remember that the SEC has 14 teams and the Big 12 has 10. Therefore, we had to discard four teams and we wanted to do it fairly. So we took the top three in the SEC. Then we knocked out LSU. We took another couple teams. Then we knocked out uh, Georgia and Kentucky in the middle. Uh, we kept the next three. We knocked out South Carolina. Okay, here are the matchups. Alabama, Oklahoma, no discredit to the Sooners, but Alabama's just a difficult matchup for anyone Maybe they win 10 consecutive games against Oklahoma. That might be a little bit much. I think Oklahoma's got enough talent to pull off a couple upsets, and they would truly be upsets. Alabama wins the series 8-2. Florida-Oklahoma State. Yeah, I know Oklahoma State looked extremely impressive against Colorado. That was Colorado and the Buffs playing over their heads most of the season. Certainly showed against two quality teams down the stretch that they weren't that good. Good, but not Top 10 good. Florida, yes, I know that the, the offense is difficult to watch at times, but so much talent. Florida wins over Oklahoma State. I'm pretty confident at 6-4. to four. Auburn, West Virginia, this is just a situation in which one team is just so much more physical than the other. And Auburn had difficulty with Oklahoma in space, but you watch that West Virginia-Miami game, and you get a dose of what you would see with Auburn and West Virginia. And all these teams are healthy. They've got full personnel, ready to go. Everybody's ready to play. Auburn beats West Virginia 7-3. Okay, I know we saw this next matchup. It was 6-4. Let's credit Kansas State. They came out. They defeated a team that recruits in the top 10 while they're recruiting in the top 60 or 70. Excellent effort. Typical Kansas State effort uh, when they have everything going right. All right, these teams are playing 10 games now. The more talented team is going to win out over 10 games slightly. I credit Kansas State for winning that game and for playing well over 10 games. So Texas A&M is going to win this series 6-4. to four. Now, is this reality? Of course it's not. Kansas State, in reality, defeated Texas A&M. But I'm projecting that we'd include that bowl game. Tex uh, Kansas State went out and won the bowl game, but then they, and then they had to play nine other times, and Texas A&M won 6-9. All right, Tennessee, TCU. We saw TCU against Georgia. Tennessee's better than Georgia. They win 7-3. to three. Arkansas, Texas, the Longhorns, they beat Notre Dame. Uh, they played well for the most part against Oklahoma. They, of course, lost to Kansas. 
Ah, yeah, Texas has the kind of talent that this could be an even series, but Arkansas lines up against the SEC West in October and November and plays relatively well most of the time. And yeah, they blew the enormous lead against Virginia Tech, but remember, they built up the enormous lead against Virginia Tech. And I know they lost to Missouri, but Texas is that bad. It's 7-3. to three. They're going to shoot themselves in the foot like they have the last five years. Mississippi State, Texas Tech, no defense. Mississippi State, this is 7-3. to three. Uh, th They would just uh, score 50 points a game and have enough athletes on defense, Mississippi State does, to hold Texas Tech reasonably down. But with uh, Pat Mahomes at quarterback, of course, it's going to be uh, uh, an interesting matchup. Vandy Baylor, we saw what Baylor's capable of in the bowl game against uh, Boise State winning big. But that's not the Baylor that showed up the entire season. They lost six of eight games in the Big 12 against marginal competition for the most part. But they're more talented than Vandy, and they win 7-3. to three. Okay, the bottom of the league is a joke. Ole Miss, yes, they finished this low in the league. But we know at full strength, Chad Kelly, at quarterback, bring back the entire lineup that was just decimated and left off the field late in the season, bring them all back to take on Iowa State. Ole Miss took Bama to the wire. Uh, Ole Miss was leading Florida State by four scores. Ole Miss would run Iowa State just out of the stadium on a regular basis, 9-1. to one. Missouri, Kansas, uh, maybe I give uh, the Jayhawks another game, but I only gave them the one because they showed this year that they beat Texas on, on, on one try. Uh, they could have beaten TCU. You know what? We're going 8-2. to two. Missouri's pretty bad. Mizzou's pretty bad. They beat no one of significance uh, until late in the season. They knocked off Arkansas in the final. We'll go 8-2 to two on this one. We'll, we'll throw the Big 12 a bone. Kansas, yeah, they did defeat Texas, and they would have beaten TCU with a made field goal at the gun. Okay, respectable wins. 8-2. to two. So this leaves it at... 68-32 SEC, Big 12 people, I know you hate me, but I don't know that you can argue most of that. Maybe the Texas A&M Kansas State because legitimately you did it. We saw it on the field, so you can extrapolate that out, maybe to a Kansas State 7-3 win in a 10-game series, but I still like the Aggies' talent. 68-32, and as you can see right there, the SEC wins 9-10 series, and that's even with leaving LSU, Georgia, and the like on the sideline. Our conference comparisons here on Mark Rogers TV, the ones coming up, the series coming up, is going to be more objective, completely objective. This is just for fun. Need to hear from you. Like to get your opinion right here on Mark Rogers TV.